have different parenting styles written about, but one really caught the attention of, Ameri of an American mom who wrote a book about it. Achtung Baby outlines the German art of raising self-reliant children with hopes it might influence the way parents think here. Joining me now is author Sarah Zaski. It's good to see you. <laughs> Hope I pronounced that correctly. So what was it exactly that inspired you? What did you see that you thought was new and different? Well, I was, had all these ideas about what Germans were like when I first moved there, and I thought that they were strict and exacting, and I was surprised to find that they were the exact opposite. In fact, they were more relaxed than American parents. In their become. parenting style. Yes. And so what, what specific things did you observe? Well, one of the first things I noticed was how they interacted with their kids on the playground. I was at a playground with my young daughter, she was two and a half when we first moved, and I saw this kid who had climbed on the outside of the structure, and he was dangling by one hand. <laughs> There was a good 10 feet below him, and I yelled, Achtung, which means watch out or yeah. attention, and no one else seemed to be bothered by it. And in fact, while I was looking for his parents, he dropped down and ran off. And, and I thought, thought, that's very different than American parents would hmm. act. So is it something that people are doing um, intentionally? Absolutely. Uh, when I talk to German parents, they express some of the same fears that we have about kidnappings, traffic accidents, kids getting hurt. But they also say, I have to let my kids do things on their own because otherwise they would never learn independence. It's that important to them. And so it, they take this as a pretty deliberate step. What do you think is different about our worldview or our assumptions about things that we seem to kind of be heading in different directions in America from what you observed in Germany? Well, I think Americans have the idea that we need to protect our children if, if, as if we could make the world 100% safe. Well, we're trying. I know. We can never do that. And I think the Germans think that instead, it's instead of prohibiting them from doing things, it's better to prepare the kids to manage risk for themselves because that's something we all have to learn how to do. And so you took that to heart, right? Yes. And obviously this doesn't mean that you just you know, put your kids on a train and hope they get off at the right station when they're two or something. There, there are limits to this or, or at least ways that you use it that are better than others. How did you figure out where the new limits were if you took your American cap on and thought anew? Well, Germans spend a lot of time preparing their kids to take on new responsibilities. They don't just fling them out in the streets and <laughs> say, find your way to <laughs> school. Luck, kids. <laughs> um, for instance, walking to school, a German parent will walk their kid to school for months or even a year before they go on their own. And they even have traffic education in class. So the teacher takes That's them out and shows them how to navigate the neighborhood around the school. And so it, it, give me some other examples of that, like um, sure. perhaps with being safe in the kitchen or someplace else. What does that look like? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I was actually pretty surprised to learn that my daughter was taught to cut fruit with knives in um, Keto, which is like preschool. She was four. Sharp knives. Sharp knives. They're small. They're kinder knives. Um, but they actually can do it, which is pretty impressive. Right. And with some instruction, I think most kids can. It's such an interesting concept because parenting is, is constantly this um, adjustment, readjustment of preparation and stepping back, preparation and stepping back. And sometimes we're, we're reluctant to step back, not as much about our kids, but for ourselves. Oh, absolutely. I think for parents, we have to constantly keep our, our fear in check. It's not like it goes away. We're yeah. always going to worry. This, oh, I can <laughs> tell you that right now. And so can my kid. All right, so I wanted to read this little little bit that you uh, write about big kids. Okay. Um, the pattern of parenting in America has seemed to be a slow and steady march toward more supervision and control. While not exactly authoritarian, there certainly isn't anything very relaxed about how Americans parent today. Raising teenagers has become even more complicated since adolescence has become a lot longer than it used to be. Let's talk about that concept and then how this parenting style applies to preteens and teens and young adults who are in this prolonged adolescence. Oh, sure. Um, in the past, there used to be very clear markers when you were an adult. You moved out of the house, you got a job, you got married, you started a family of your own. Well, today, um, not many young people uh, will do all of those things, or some of them won't do any of them. And what is the marker then that mm -hmm. means you're an adult? And I would argue it means that you can manage your own life. So even if you're living with your mom and dad, which is actually fairly common in Europe, you're paying your bills, you are doing your own laundry, you're waking yourself up in the morning, you're in charge of yourself. And at that point, parents need to do what? They need, if your young adult is now 18 years old or older and in your house, 
they are no longer a child under your watch. They are an adult and you should treat them more like a roommate. So you move into more of a consultant role. See, right. you, you were much more lax than me because my, my definition of adulthood was when you pay for the place you're living in, <laughs> then you're an adult. <laughs> so what does this mean, the longer adolescence, and what does that suggest about the, the, way, we, um, the way we need to parent as somebody is trying to transition and trying to launch in what is a harder job market and a society that encourages them to be adolescents and not take on, not marry early, not do all those things that we might have done 50 years ago? Well, I think it's really important to give kids bits of responsibility and more and more as they go along. I think as Americans we tend to wait too late to teach our kids to do things. Or after something's happened. Or after something's happened, yeah, absolutely. And also when our attitude towards adolescence, they're going to be out there on their own at 18. So if you have a 17 year old and you're still really restricting how they do things and you're monitoring everything, you might want to think about pulling back because there's not a lot of difference between a 17 year old at home and an 18 year old at college. Right. And they may go far away and have all kinds of things they've never heard of or thought about or talked with you about. How old are your kids now? They are 8 and 11. 8 and 11. And so what do you think um, has happened to them as a result of your looking at this in a new way? How do you think they're different than they would be if you had not seen the German style of parenting? I think they're much more confident, or at least I like to think so. And they're much more adventurous, um, having had that experience of living in another country's. Mm -hmm. um, but also living in another country that allowed them to do so many things. So when they see their friends aren't allowed to ride their bike to school or something, they, they question that. They're like, why is that? You know, because all my friends in Germany did it. Isn't that interesting. Yeah. Well, it's fun to see what the rest of the world is doing and see what we can learn from that. Plus, your kids probably have fancy knife skills in the kitchen <laughs> and can help out at mealtime. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah holds a discussion about the German art of raising self-reliant children tonight, Monday the 22nd at 7.30 p.m. at the Westside School in West Seattle. Tickets are $5 and we put a link to them on New Day's website. Up next, Cisco with tips on making your garden dog friendly after this. <laughs> Thank you so much.